What's up guys, Parker here from the BI Elite YouTube channel. Reed has invited me back to post another video on his channel, so I figured I would take that opportunity to show how to set up a dynamic Pareto chart based on a single, easy to use measure. Uh, so basically a Pareto chart uh, looks like this. It is a combo chart where one metric is ordered in a descending fashion. So you see I have set this up based on revenue. Uh, it's the bars are ordered in descending order. And there's a cumulative sum line on top of it that basically shows the percent up to that point. So this first bar makes up 27% of my total revenue. The second bar plus the first bar makes up 48% of my revenue. So the Pareto chart follows the Pareto principle, which basically says that 20% of your inputs can usually... Uh, make up 80% of your results. So in this case, you can see that the first five categories make up 79.81% of my revenue. So they are the five categories that I should put most of my thinking into if I were looking at this from a business perspective. So this is dynamic to any of the slicers that you want to select. So if I get rid of those selections and select another country, let's say Belgium, you can see this is the Pareto chart for Belgium, or I can just select Germany, and this is the Pareto chart for Germany. So it's dynamic to your data. I'm gonna show you how you can set this up in a really, really easy to set up measure. Um, so this is the measure, the entire code here, in case you wanna to skip to the end and just see how I did it, but we'll be walking through this step by step. So I'm gonna minimize this and go to the second page where I've already set up, um, I've duplicated the page and basically taken off all the conditional formatting, taken off the Pareto chart line off of this. So this is a combo chart right now, but we have revenue just showing as the bars. So let's go ahead and create a new measure. And I'm just going to call this Pareto demo. So there are a couple of steps to this. Uh, We're going to want to calculate our total revenue first. So I'm going to call this var total revenue. And this is gonna be the total revenue, which is my metric in this graph right here, taking away all the filters uh, for this. And I think this on the uh, x-axis is product type. So I'm gonna remove all the filters on product type just to get a total revenue for the entire chart. So I'm going to do calculate. I'm going to sum my revenue and use all selected to get rid of the filters on product type. So I'm gonna get rid of all the filters on the sales table all selected sales table. And just for demo purposes, oh, I need to return that. Total, <laughs> total revenue. I'm gonna fix that spelling, total revenue. And I'm gonna throw this in as a line value. So right now it is basically the same value across all of the product types because I've uh, removed that, um, that filter on product type using the all selected. Next, I am going to basically just sum the current sales for whichever bar we're on. So I'm gonna call that current revenue. I'm gonna set that equal to, it's really just revenue. So right now, this will be the exact same as the bars because I have not removed any filters. So now it just follows the trend of the bar. So it's always ending up at the height of the bar. So it makes sense. So if I were to do something like current revenue, oh, if I could type correctly, if I were to do current revenue divided by total revenue, we would see the percentage of, um, of our revenue that is made up by each bar. So you can see that uh, this first bar is about 25% of the total sales. And the second bar is 20% of the total sales. But a proto chart needs to build on itself. So this uh, second point here should be the first point plus the second point. So it will be increasing as we go from uh, the max revenue to the minimum revenue. So in order to do that, it's just, it just takes a couple more steps. We're going to create a summarized table. Summarized table. And we're gonna use the summarize function. We're gonna take our all selected of the table that we we're working off of, which is sales in my case. And we need all selected here because we need to remove those filters again. Um, I am going to group based on the product type. This is the field that is in your X axis. So this X axis is using product type. So I'm gonna group on that product type. And I am going to create a new uh, column called revenue. And to do that, I'm going to sum the revenue. Oh, wrong one. I need to sum revenue. 
And I'm just gonna click enter for right now. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code right here because sometimes it is kind of hard to understand what's happening when you summarize a table inside of a variable because you can't see what's going on. I can go to modeling and type in new table and just create a demo table and paste that uh, code in and just click summarize so that we can summarize and see what that's doing behind the scenes. So if we were to go to our data view and go to that demo table, we see this is what it looks like. So basically it's grouping based on the product type and summing the revenue. So if we were to order this descending, we see that eyewear makes up most of our revenue followed by tens, followed by watches. So that is exactly what it's doing in our measure. So it's creating that summarized table based on product type but it's taking in all selected so it is only ever going to take in what the filters or the slicers are allowing to show in this graph so if we were to select let's say golf shop and now we're down to seven uh seven product types uh our uh, measure is only ever going to bring in those seven product types so it won't look exactly like this table because this table is taking it in without any filters applied uh, so our table and our measure will just take in the selections that we are passing into the measure. So final step here, we need to basically uh, sum up all of the percentages up to, or well, all of the total revenues up to that category. So when we order this by descending as it already is, we'll be able to sum it up and uh, basically see how much sales we have, or how many sales have occurred up to that category. So we're gonna create a variable called cumulative sum. And we're gonna set that equal to the sum X measure because we're gonna to need to sum up the revenues up to whichever product type we're on. So we're going to use a filter table. We're going to filter our summarized table down to where the revenue, to where the revenue column is greater than or equal to the current revenue. So imagine we're on this first bar. We've already calculated our current revenue. So we are going to filter down the summarized table to where that revenue column is greater than or equal to our current revenue. So there will only be one record of our summarized table. If we're on the third record uh, in this chart, our revenue is now 38 million. We are going to filter down the summarized table to where the revenue is 38 million or higher, which will give us these three records. So once we have that filtered down, all we have to do is type in revenue. And in that, so now we have our sum up to that product type. And all we have to do now is type in cumulative sum. And we're dividing by that total revenue that we have already calculated. And this is our final, um, our final look at what we've calculated. So we see that of those seven categories, 44% is made up of that first category, then 79% up to that second category, and 93% by that third category. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some filters to get some more columns in here. Yep, and that's what it looks like. So you can add some conditional formatting in order to make this more apparent what's in that uh, top 80% because that's the percentage that we care about. We can add some data colors to the bars. So if we go to default color or advanced controls rather, and we could do something based on, based on rules, uh, based on our new measure we created called Pareto Demo. So if it's less than, uh, sorry, if it's greater than or equal to minimum, less than, um, let's say less than 0 0.8, we can make that gray. But if it's greater than or equal to Zero, oh, sorry, I have it the opposite. If it's greater than or equal to minimum, less than uh, 0.8, we will say, we will make that, say this nice purple color, or should I make that less than or equal to? If it's greater than 0 0.8, or less than or equal to maximum, we will make that gray. And we click okay, so now we have our conditional formatting. And now we're able to easily identify what makes up our uh, top 80% of our revenue and we can see that's these first five categories and again It's dynamic to uh, the selections that we are passing in So I just want to make a quick note in that Pareto demo measure 
we are grouping based on product type, which is what's on the x-axis. You can change this to whatever you want. So if we wanted to use instead retailer type, we could group on retailer type. So that will just have to match. So that's very important. So I hope this was informative. I hope you understand uh, when you would use a Pareto chart and why it, it might apply to you. Um, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to Reed's channel. Make sure you subscribe to mine. And I will see you in the next video.